We're in round one. We're going to play first. One lander, so we're going to mulligan. This one's fine. Going to bottom land. Um, we can find the waste on turn one. She think that's fine. Do a little bit of deck thinning. We don't need double red for anything, so why not? So, turn three, Matter Reshaper, probably what we're going to do. Cultivator Drone does ramp us into Pathfinder, but it's not necessary. So if I played Cultivator Drone, I guess we could have gone Reshaper Coral Hum Guide the next turn. That might have been better. I just, I guess I don't mind trading off Reshaper just because it's, it's good value. I just wanted to get it in there as soon as possible because I want to start bashing away with it. Because I don't, I really don't care about trading it for a card because you just, you end up netting a card. Okay. All right. So we don't want to trade there because he can sack the Scion, so it's not really a trade. Well, it is a trade, but it's not a good trade. All right. Well, regretting the reshaper now, but nothing to be done. And I'm not going to trade a reshaper for a summoner. Hmm. Alright. I think we're offering the trade now. Well, I guess he's not. Alright. Gonna take it. I think I'm offering the trade now, though. Not thrilled about it. Well, that was a good draw. Alright. Well, now I'm not gonna offer the trade, so we'll go Blinding Drone and Coral Home Guide. I'm trying to think if I'm willing to double block a stalking drone with a reshaper and a coral home guide. The thing is, he gets to sack a scion and kill them both, but it's it still ends up being about a one for one, about. Because I do get, at the very least, at worst I get a land off the top of my deck and into, so it's like draw a card, basically. Opponent's got four cards to my one, which is not great. Well, at least he doesn't get to... Sack it, right? 
So he's just bashing for a billion here. So I think I double block the summoner now. He gets to kill a blinding drone, which does suck, but he only gets to kill the blinding drone. And we only take six, so I think that's what we're going to do. I'm not happy about it. I just can't afford to take 9 damage, I don't think. It seems very excessive. Alright, Thought Harvester's fine here. So, now we definitely stay back. Oh, we're double blocking. I I can't deal with it later, so we're going to double block. If he's got a trick, it's not good, but hopefully get something out of this matter reshaper. All right. Anticipate, not bad. Does something. Predator, okay. Mobilizer Eldrazi. Toughness greater than its power. So we can block with Guide, but we can't block with Harvester. Got it. All right, Sweep Away was a good draw. Um, why don't we anticipate now, because we can still cast Sweep Away. And I'm curious if there's anything else we want to cast uh, before the end of our turn. Yeah, Storm Chaser Mage is good. Rush of Ice is good. Um, I'm trying to think what I like here I mean Storm Chaser Mage is mostly just going to be a 1-3 flyer Rush of Ice is I think a little bit better it's going to be able to lock something down buy some time give us a 3-3 it's probably better I think Storm Chaser Mage evades which is good but I just don't think we're going to be able to prowess it much it's a better card to play on turn 2 than turn 7 I think so now we'll just pass We'll make him use the Eldrazi if he wants to get by the Thought Harvester. And we have the Sweep Away too, so it seems good. So I can still double block the Predator here too. We'll lose a Thought Harvester, I guess, but... Beastmaster. All right. I'm going to have to Rush of Ice that. Still okay, though. So we sweep away this. We're going to Rush of Ice the Beastmaster...
Ooh, that was a good draw. Six lands, so we can't... Unfortunately, cannot Rush of Ice plus Blinding Drone, can we? Well, I still think we have to take care of this guy, so... Smash here. Well, that's too bad. Well, he doesn't have a land, though. So I can at least trade the Predator for the Guide, which seems good. Oh, wait, I can't? Why can't I? Why did this get boosted? What did I just miss? Oh, because it's an ally. That makes sense. I was like, what's going on? So, we're dead. Totally unexpected, too. Bummer. Let's go to game two here. Not feeling very good uh, since we just got annihilated there. and I never even kind of felt like I was in that game. So bad sign. Not looking good for us, folks. Let's uh, hope we can draw a lot better this game because it looks like we're going to have to. Um, anything different? Anything at all? I mean, Oracle of Dust is an option. I think everything we have is probably better. No, I think we're going to stick to the same thing and just hope we draw better. Okay, we'll play first. Yeah, we'll keep this. The Anticipate makes it a lot better. Make sure we don't miss that land drop. All right, missed the land drop there. Bummer. Let's swing. All right, kind of a scary start. Got the land now, so... What's the play? I would get beaten down for seven... I can play the Cultivator Drone and double block the Snapping Gnarlet if he attacks. That's assuming he has no land, or that's assuming he has land, no removal. Doesn't seem particularly safe to take 7 damage on my opponent's turn 4, which is absolutely brutal. So he's curving out in scary fashion. I think we're going to have to sweep away. I don't love it.
Kind of hoping he doesn't surge out a free runner. Yeah, it's not what I wanted to see. I would go as far to say that's the last thing I wanted to see. All right, well, we get to make some plays here, I guess. So we can do Cyclone Sire, which keeps the snapping gnarly at bay. Probably want to do that. My other option is uh, drone plus a coils, but that doesn't keep the gnarlid back, so we're, we're going to get slammed anyway you slice it. All right, so I think the plan is, oh, that helps. Glad we have that card. <laughs> so I think we're going to cultivate a drone and we'll leave up reality hemorrhage. Could just do it now. I mean, the 4-4 is going to be a problem. If See, the problem is if he plays a land and in response I hemorrhage it and he's got a pump spell, that's a big problem. I think it might... I, I'm so far behind, I'm, I'm just going to risk it. I feel like we'll just do it. I want to see what he's got. He didn't play the land last time. I feel like he was saving it for the pre. Well, maybe this looming spires pans out. He's doing it on the free runner. We're going to hemorrhage the free runner um, instead of the predator because these at least require him making land drops. This way I can still double block the Predator. Actually, he kind of has to like leave the Gnarlid back too. And I can totally trade a Sire for a Predator and get a 3-3. It's good for us anyway. Um... I think we're just going to eat this. So now I think we're just going to go Invoker and Tightening Coils the Predator. Oh, well that's good value for us anyway, so okay. Still a couple lands away from Invoker. Getting there. I think I just smash for three. He's got one card left in hand. So I can smash for five, play Invoker plus Coils. Or I can just smash for three, play Invoker, and then I can double block Predator. What if he goes land, press, and... I feel like we lose to press into service anyway. What am I saving Tightening Coils for? I guess that's a question. Um... Probably nothing. I think I think we have to attack here. We don't have to, but I feel like if we don't attack, we just don't have a great shot at uh, at winning this as this game goes on. I 
I mean, at least with Invoker, we've got, like, something we're building towards. And if he has, like, a Touch of the Void... At least not going towards our face. Path Warden is something I would have preferred to put the Tightening Quills on, so now I'm pretty bummered out. It's like exactly what I didn't want to see. Let's see if I can use this. Can I use that for it? Didn't think I could. I was trying it, though. I was curious. I mean, I can still double block the Path Warden, but... That's assuming he doesn't have press into service, I guess. Well, him not blocking is nice, too. All right. Let's get the mage out there, I guess. So if I hadn't tightening coils that, guess it ultimately would have been better, but just hoping he didn't have a big play, I guess. Environmental mage. It's not the worst, actually. I mean, we're double blocking Path Warden. That much should be pretty clear. Even if he has Touch of the Void, we're double blocking the Path Warden, so it doesn't matter. All right. I think it kind of makes us keep our Storm Chief. Well, now I guess we don't have to. Well, let's say he has a removal spell. Say he plays an ally. I can only block two guys. I think we have to keep swinging. I don't love it, but I, I don't see how we win this game if I'm not attacking. Like, it, we're just not going to win if I'm not attacking. I just need a land. Got what I asked for. I did get what I asked for. So I gotta play this invoker ability intelligently. Should have played the land actually, so I don't didn't have to tap my creature. I didn't think about that. That's really not what I wanted to see. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's really, 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 really not what I wanted to see. So, I guess we kill the 3-3. Three, three. Because I can block the two threes a little bit better. All right, we're going to kill the summoner. Should have played the land, like I said. Know what I was thinking, sandbagging it. I guess I wanted my opponent to think I had something. Trying to think how I don't die. Um, well, this is going to work out okay. If he does attack with... The, I guess... If he does attack with these, we get to eat these. If he just attacks there, we're going to eat this. Yeah, this still works out okay. We're going to triple block the Path Warden. Yeah. I think he realizes we're still going to be triple blocking the Path Warden. So the play is eat this and then triple block here. So we kill that. We take five. We go to two. That is the play, though. The Vigilance Trampler has just got to go, as you might expect. Well, is that lethal yet? I don't think it is, is it? I can play Immobilizer Eldrazi for eight, nine mana. I don't have enough to... I can get in for six. think we do that next turn makes more sense All right. Got there. Surprised we got there. That that felt like we were... Our opponent's deck is really good against us, too. I kind of need the crab. We need to be able to block. I should have brought in crab the first time around. I'm not going to change my mana base over it, I don't think. Um... Can't trade. Let's see here. I could cut Anticipate for it. I kind of want all my creatures, but... It's not like Coral Home Guide's looking great here. I probably just need all my cheap creatures, though. Coral Home Guide really is not that great here. It's only great when he's missing land drops, which doesn't seem... Super likely. 
But then it's just two ones in general don't seem great. Even one threes don't seem great. Maybe I do want the Oracle of Dust. 3-5 does seem like a really good body. Let's. I kind of want to cut the Coral Home Guide and the... Well, not the Immobilize. Maybe the Slide Runner. Why don't we cut Anticipate and the Coral Home Guide? Actually, the probably the Slide Runner. We don't have any pump spells, and I don't think we're going to be beating down most of the time. Coral Home Guide at least has some late game applications, mana sync. But I think we do actually want the Oracle of Dust, and I know we want the Ancient Crab. I don't want the Aggressor, though, I don't think. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah, we're keeping it, for sure. And having the reality hemorrhage is nice. Oh, well, that worked perfect. So now we can find wastes and be perfect mana. So snapping Gnarled. Don't think I'm going to reality hemorrhage that, even though I could. I think I'd rather get a guide out there now. I kind of want to save the hemorrhage for the Valakut Predator. Since the Predator is just so much more abusive. The Gnarlid I could trade with a Nettle Drone and a Pinch, I guess. an easy trade. Kind of a nice trade. I don't even mind trading it for a trick, to be honest. All right. I mean, it's a little brutal, but the fact that he used a spell to block that, I feel like is actually ultimately going to benefit us. That's a nice draw right there. I'm going to play it before the Nettle Drone because... He just busted his trick, and we can cast more things next turn this way. Relentless Hunter. All right. So I can cast Nettle Drone plus Reality Hemorrhage. I think I actually just want the Thought Harvester, and then it kind of sucks because Nettle Drone's not getting value right now, but now we can double block the Relentless Hunter, which seems a lot better. Like, if I played the Nettle Drone, I couldn't double block. Well, I guess I could, couldn't I? Maybe playing the Nettle Drone was better. It's like, Thought Harvester makes better use of the mana, plus it leaves, lets, still lets me leave up Reality Hemorrhage. And if I play Nettle Drone and Reality Hemorrhage the same turn, it's not like I, can, I can't use Nettle Drone's ability. All right, let's see the attacks. No attacks. Well, that's good news. Invoker's a good draw, too. So now we get to go Nettle Drone Invoker, and we're going to start swinging. It's also missing the land drop, which is relevant. Exiling lands is our hope. Did hit a land. That's good news for us. 
And it was maybe his only waste. Wastes, which could be good news for us. He's got reality hemorrhage in his deck. Decent chance he's going to nuke our nettle drone. Okay, not having reality hemorrhage up here is kind of a bummer, but then again, it would still be... Be a two for two, I guess. All right. I mean, we're still a little ways... We're actually three lands away from Invoker anyway, so I guess it's not the worst. And we still get to double block Relentless Hunter, too. Question is, do I want to trade? I don't think I do. I'm going to take it here. The reason I don't, I guess, is because I have a uh, sweep away in hand. Side leopard's pretty irrelevant. Oh, free runner. So he does have plays for days, which kind of sucks, but. Uh, Rush of Ice. Or. Leave up sweep away plus reality hemorrhage. Leaving up sweep away plus reality hemorrhage seems better to me. So, reality hemorrhaging the free runner, block the scythe leopard, sweep away the relentless hunter. This still works fine. So we're actually going to block the Relentless Hunter, too, to get rid of all his mana. So block, block. I'm trying to think if I would take this trade. It's not a bad trade. It's really not. I mean, Relentless Hunter, I think I'm... Well, it's kind of tough to say. I do want him to pay. All right, he did oblige us, which is good. So we let that resolve. Deal damage to our opponent. We reality hemorrhage this guy, exile and tap, choosing you as my opponent, exile, hit another land, kill that thing, sweep away this guy. Put it on his library. Do that. Even if we top deck a land here, we're actually tempoing him out pretty well. Got a drone instead, so well, it doesn't really matter. I guess we still get to... Although that is pretty good, isn't it? Get in for eight. He could smash back for three... I think we're going on the offensive here.
Getting in seven points of damage seems relevant. Plus he has to... Uh, he's not getting a land, and he has to pay three to play the Relentless Hunter. Yeah. That's a good draw. This is one cheaper, too. Probably just want the Cyclone Sire, though. I can attack with these two, though, which is probably better. Guess I can attack with everything but the Nettle Drone, can't I? I think we're doing that, actually, instead of playing the Sire. Could have outnumber. Guess I didn't factor that. I kind of wanted to get this guy off the board, though. Hit another land. All right. Well, looking decent here. Looking pretty good, I should say. All right. Beat our mana screwed opponent there. Lucky for us. Even, I mean, that was a, that was a tough match. Opponent had a really nice, aggressive uh, red-green landfall deck. Very aggressive and nice looking. It's what we were trying to build in the beginning, and sort of just got pushed into blue-red weirdo mid-range. Because we're not aggro, and we're not really a good late game. I don't know what we are. We're not blue-red tempo. We're not blue-red surge. We're blue-red D-plus deck is what we are. Not even D-plus. I'm lowering it, 66%. We basically just beat our opponent because... Well, the one game I'm surprised we won, the Valakut Invoker game riding that one to victory. But this game, he got mana screwed and we just could totally take advantage. We had the we had a we had a good hand. Alright, we'll see you in round two.